everybody it's Mitch again um, as you can see back out in the shed once again with the Model T um, I thought I'd share with you the um, latest um, few things I've been uh, doing on it in terms of uh, maintenance and that um, most um, important of which was uh, repairing the handbrake mechanism which had um, had quit working it is actually it was completely worn out so we'll start off I'll show you the uh, the uh, the old handbrake components which I've removed and then I'll show you the new ones okay so what we have here is the old um, or I should say the original um, handbrake quadrant and pull um, the original pull I don't know if you can quite see it there if the camera can focus on it you can see the tip here by my finger it's supposed to have a nice sharp edge on it, but it's um let me see if I can get the camera to focus properly. The uh, the edge is completely um worn out. So that had to come off. And also the uh quadrant the uh, the teeth on it were uh, I did try to file them but they're um well, they don't well it doesn't it doesn't look it on the video but uh, they are actually quite badly worn so <clears throat> that had to be ground off because the uh, it was originally hot riveted onto the chassis rail which I'll show you in a minute so it had to be ground off um, in order to remove it and now we'll, I'll move this light and then we'll have a look underneath the car now my apologies once again for um, <clears throat> bad camera work, I'll do the best I can. We're looking up at, um, at the handbrake mechanism from underneath the car here. Um, and you can see where I've installed the new um, handbrake uh, quadrant, which I've, uh, <clears throat> which I've um, used bolts to attach it to the chassis. I've used um, uh, high carbon or rather high tensile bolts uh, to attach it there and if I can get in uh, from behind here you can see the new um, paw locks into those teeth quite nicely there oops going out of focus a bit there we go so you can see it works it actually holds this time whereas the the old one because it was so badly worn every time you put the handbrake on um, you'd uh, get out of the car and then you hear it go twang and it, it, the handbrake would just let go so <clears throat> and you notice I've put this uh, this spring here that's uh, that's not original um, what I've had the reason I've had to do that is because on the handbrake lever itself the spring that's supposed to um, keep the pull locked into the teeth there um, it's actually getting a little bit weak so I've put I've added this spring underneath so it keeps everything nice and tightly locked together now what we'll do is I'll go up um, into the cab, we'll take the floor out and we'll have a look at it from um, from above okay so we've removed the rubber floor mat and now we've just got to take out the floor pieces themselves there's one there, two, <clears throat> and lastly the third one here. And we'll move that light so we can see better. Okay, so we've moved the fluoro so we can see what uh, what we're doing in here. <clears throat> okay, so you can see the uh, most of this, um, a lot of this mechanism here, like this part here, for example, is all the um, Rocky Mountain brakes. Um, we'll have a quick look at those shortly. Um, but what I wanted to show you was uh, from above. Apologise for the camera work; not very good. Um, where I've installed the new uh, quadrant and pull there, you can see the uh, you can see it locking in properly, and. It, uh, it locks in really nicely. I'm going to squeeze the there. 
and where I mentioned about that uh, non-original spring before, what's happening is in the handbrake handle itself, this this spring here is actually starting to let go. So uh, I put the extra spring in down the bottom to make sure that uh, the uh, pull actually locks into the handbrake, into the quadrant properly, so it won't keep letting go. <clears throat> okay, so that's the handbrake sorted. Now, let's take a look at the um, Rocky Mountain brakes, just while we hit on the subject of brakes. Um, as you saw there, there's the uh, the uh, part of the mechanism from the brake pedal itself. So when you push this brake pedal now, um, it does still, it still operates the um, um, transmission brake. Um, but it now also, uh, if you see when I push the pedal there, that rod down the bottom, <clears throat> it operates those as well. So if we go down to the back of the car, <coughs> you can see where I've installed the Rocky Mountain brakes. So you can still see the original brake drums inside. So your original parking brake drums. They still work. And now you, we've also got the Rocky Mountain brakes which um, are for stopping. So in the event that uh, that the uh, transmission brakes fail or indeed the um, Babbitt uh, thrust washers inside the uh, diff, although the, I've actually got brass ones in here, but the originals were made of a, a, of a rather dicey material called Babbitt which tends to disintegrate over time. And when that happens you have no drive and no brakes. So <clears throat> if you're a Model T owner and uh, you didn't know that, it's a very um, useful lesson to learn. A friend of mine, um, he had the misfortune of uh, the thrust washers in his diff housing. Um, they disintegrated and he basically had to find something soft to crash into um, or he wouldn't still be here to tell the tale. So, <clears throat> the lesson there. Um, if, you have, if you've got um, Babbitt thrust washers in your diff, change them out for um, um, brass ones and invest in a set of Rocky Mountain brakes like I have because they are they're well worth it and the car does actually stop better than on the original brakes as well and also good for, for your parking brake as well where it, um, you can't really um, a, like a stock Model T I wouldn't trust the handbrake to park it on a slope because what you've got is um, um, a steel steel brake drum and cast iron brake shoes and metal on metal is not really going to do much of good at keeping the car still certainly not on a hill so a few uh, Model T top tips there I, I uh, expect um, would be valuable to people out there so um, if you've got any questions about any of that either leave a question in the comments or send me a message there's a link to the website there, so you can contact me that way as well. Um, yep, yeah, let me know.